my foot to the floor, all oh, 1400 yard downs. Oh, that's not very fun. I'll have to keep messing with it. Well, I kind of got it to do it. It's, it's not very happy with it. I think I need to do a little more work, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> that's the start of my rev limiter anyways. I'm gonna have to disable some check engine lights. It, it really doesn't like that. Well, I'm kind of done with messing around with that rev limiter for day, today because um, I can't really figure out how to make it pull any timing out while it's uh, bouncing off the rev limiter to like try and spool the turbo because I don't know there's just no settings for that because I'm using the stock ECU so I think I could fool the barometric sensor to uh, go into if I fool the sensor I could make it on pull a bunch of timing in that point and I might do that sometime but for today I'm over that I might do something else well I am doing something else I'm uh, trying to fix my relay for my welder that's broken here, I got it all torn apart, just trying to make sense of it, trying to figure out why the hell it's being dumb to me. And you can see that the contacts are all, uh, they got like a bunch of arc marks on them. I can't really, uh, I can't really see anything else that's wrong with this thing other than these super crazy arc marks that are on there. It's hard to get this camera to focus. So I'm gonna clean those up and maybe we'll be okay because like inside the relay usually these sit like this and then these go down to make contact by uh, this guy here. It's like a coil that you give it some power and it sucks itself along these uh, magnets to this magnet or to this magnet. I don't know how to really explain it, but I'm going to try and clean these up and then uh, I'll try to trip the relay with some 12 volts or 120 volts and see if the sound goes away. Well, um, I seem to think like these springs here, I don't know why they would, but they seem to have, they seem to be too strong. I can't even get it to focus. But the, they seem to be too strong, so it's happened making these magnets here because these two magnets get like stuck together inside this uh, coil here. They just get like sucked together like that. But it seems like these springs are too strong that it's having a hard time getting completely closed. So I gave these contacts a better clean right down to just bare metal. And, uh, oh my god, this camera. And, uh, that took a little bit of the height off it too, so that would make the springs not be as tight. And I think I'm going to cut a coil out of these springs too, because, I mean, I'm not putting the relay back in my, holy crap, this freaking camera. Well, I just cut some really small coils out of the uh, out of those springs on the top of my relay, and surprisingly enough, I think that might have done it because it seems to work now. Let's hope it stays like that. It doesn't make that horrible noise anymore. Never a good thing when you have a Cummins get towed into your shop on the back of a tow truck. Poor thing. Well, messing with this uh, 04 Cummins here today. It got towed in because uh, it doesn't run. The fuel pump's not working. Um, the owner replaced the fuel pump and still doesn't work, but 
Uh, he didn't check the wiring or anything like that. And let's just have a little poke into it and stuff like that. And um, it seems like there's power at the fuse, which is here. And there's power going to the relay. And on the relay side, I mean on the coil side, and on the supply side. And it's coming out the other side of the relay, and the relay is tripping and everything. But uh, this hole here is the wire is where that one goes all the way back through the wiring to the fuel pump at the back. And between the fuse panel and back here at the plug for the fuel pump, we have no connection. And uh, I have it pulled out. The wiring harness pulled out of the truck right there because it had some issues where the drive shaft already pulled the wiring harness out of this truck, so it's it's uh, it's already been molested a bit before. But it's this wire here, this orange and red wire, which goes to the fuel pump, and I've tested from here back to the fuel pump, and the wiring's good. And from here forward, well, from here to the relay is gone. So, well, I'm just uh, trying to find out exactly where this wire goes, and it's having a good look at this guy. You can see that orange with red line is our wire, and there's a hole in it with some green crusties. Well, there was a lot more green crusties, but I was picking at them. Yeah, look at that. And I was poking my multimeter at it, and it, and it, uh, made a reading for a second, so there's got to be something there. I mean, I'm just testing for continuity between the two probes of my multimeters, so... I'm gonna dig away at it a bit more, maybe. Maybe that's all it is. Hopefully. So there's literally only the plastic around the outside of the wiring that was holding it in there. Like, I just... I messed with it a bit, and there's, there's no copper left. It's all corroded away. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So I don't know, I can't really use reuse this pin, I don't think. I can't pull this cable, I mean this plug apart. So I'll just have to uh, make another plug somewhere. That's okay. Well, she lives again. It didn't take me very long. I think I got maybe 30 minutes of work into it. Gonna take her for a rip now and take her home. Well, if you're ever under a quarter tank in your truck and you have the stock fuel pump set up, really don't go hard on it. Cause check this out. Look how fast you run out of fuel if you command like full fuel when you're under quarter tank. Empty. Ran out of fuel. The truck ain't gonna like that very much. I'm uh, monitoring the vehicle's CAN bus network right now. I'm trying to find a certain code so I can simulate something specific. I'll have to wait until I do it before I tell you though what it is I'm looking for. I am gonna find that speaker and I'm gonna figure out how to delete it. That's the culprit right there. This little noisy thing. I just uh, desoldered it right from the board. So uh, I'll power up my gauge cluster right now and see if it still works. I mean, it should still work. It's not a speaker is not going to stop it from working. That's for sure. Ooh, that's nice. Just turns on, no sound, nothing. Cool. I like it. So there you go, if you ever want to make your uh, truck not have that horrible beeping sound, just desolder this guy right off the board. Right from there. Easy. 
I hope that helps somebody out. Well, I was just in here doing some uh, wiring, cleaning some stuff up, and I wanted to make a um, a plug for the CAN bus so I can read the CAN bus with my laptop while I'm driving with that plugged in for the OBT2. And I was like, hey, I wonder if there's something back here. And Dodge was nice enough just to give me this plug with all the CAN bus wires right on it, just sitting right here, just doing nothing. So that's pretty cool. It's just sitting in this little, uh, um, like plastic plug just to hold it there. So now I can just uh, build a little plug off that and I'll be able to read the CAN bus while I'm driving.